Hello, in this mind map, I'm going to do an overview of breast diseases. So let's just start off by familiarizing ourselves with um, what exactly the breast is. So basically, it's a collection of modified skin appendages. Um, it's quite similar to sweat glands, and uh, the main function is for nutrition as well as to provide immunological protection to the offspring. And uh, this is an organ that is present in mammals. So here's the histology of the breast, and you can see here this is one of the large ducts. This is the terminal duct lobular unit. Terminal duct lobular unit is where a lot of the epithelial tumors come from, like uh, carcinoma, ductal carcinoma, and uh, lobular carcinoma. There is a specialized stroma within the TDLU, and this is called the intralobular stroma. Whereas as opposed to this, the stroma outside is between the lobules and it's called interlobular stroma. It's important to recognize the intralobular stroma because it is um, the source of the fibroepithelial tumors of the breast, which we will talk about in a different uh, mind map. Now let's look at some of the major diseases that occur in the breast. Uh, this uh, mind map is actually not comprehensive. I'm just giving you... Uh, some examples of some major categories of diseases and if you want to look at the more comprehensive list I would refer you to your textbooks such as Robbins. So to start off with we're going to look at the inflammatory conditions. Acute mastitis uh, is often related to lactation so it's, it's seen in a postpartum female um, during the lactational period and uh, it is often due to a bacterial infection such as staphylococcus. It presents with pain, redness um, and warmth and one of the complications can be abscess. Uh, it's important to differentiate this from inflammatory carcinoma because Clinically, uh, this carcinoma, because it affects the lymphatics in the uh, dermis, can sometimes present with redness, swelling and pain as well. But this is usually seen in more elderly women and this is a very aggressive tumour. Now the next entity is granulomatous mastitis. So whenever we see uh, granulomas, which are collections of epithelioid histiocytes in any site, uh, we must always exclude infection. And particularly, of course, we have to exclude tuberculosis. Now, once infection is excluded, um, there is an entity called idiopathic granulomatous mastitis. And this is where we actually are able to see granulomas within the breast lobules. Um, it, the cause is not absolutely certain. Sometimes it may be associated with generalized granulomatous disease as well. And the, the next entity is uh, inflammatory reaction or tissue reaction to foreign materials such as implants or even injections. And examples include paraffinoma, uh, this sort of hard mass that is associated with paraffin injections, and siliconoma. Sometimes when silicon implants uh, that were used uh, in the past rupture, they incite an inflammatory response such as uh, foreign body giant cell granulomas and lots of fibrosis as well. Now, under traumatic, we can have fat necrosis, and uh, it's very important to know that fat necrosis exists as an entity um, because the main differential diagnosis is actually malignancy. And the reason for this is because fat necrosis often can present as a hard, irregular mass. So if it's palpated, it actually feels quite alarming. And it can even give rise to skin retraction over the mass. And to make things worse, uh, the mammogram can sometimes show this uh, irregular density. So these cases usually will end up being biopsied. And then we just see some uh, necrotic fatty tissue and some macrophages and no evidence of malignancy. The next category is developmental disorders and I just want to mention one. This will be the accessory axillary breast. So um, accessory breast tissue can actually occur anywhere from the embryological areas of breast development and that extends down the milk line. It is from the axilla all the way to the inguinal region. Most of the time the accessory tissue is in the axilla and this is important because sometimes malignancies can arise in accessory breast tissue. 
Now we move on to a very important category, and this is the benign epithelial lesions or benign epithelial conditions of the breast. Some of these may confer an increased risk of malignancy, so it's important to know about these. Uh, the first line of classification is to divide them into non-proliferative epithelial lesions versus proliferative lesions. So when we look at it under the microscope, we can see whether it's uh, proliferative, are there too many cells or not. Here is an example of a non-proliferative epithelial lesion. What we can see grossly is the appearance of many of these empty, rounded cystic spaces. And these are surrounded by this white, fibrous-appearing stroma. And this is a classical example of simple fibrocystic change or fibrocystic disease, as it used to be called. And this is a benign, non-proliferative epithelial lesion. Now, um, among the proliferative uh, epithelial lesions, the next question we need to ask is, is there any cytologic or nuclear atypia? So, of course, the answer is either no or yes. If there is no atypia, the examples would include ductal hyperplasia, where there are more than two cell layers lining the duct or the lobule, because normally there are only two cell layers, the outer myoepithelial layer and the inner luminal layer. So when we look at it under the microscope, we see too many cells. And an example is florid ductal hyperplasia, like we see here. First of all, you realize that it's a very rounded structure. So this is still surrounded by a layer of myoepithelial cells with the basement membrane outside it. And within this uh, ductal lumen, there's lots and lots and lots of cells, way too many cells. So most of the time, these are composed of both epithelial cells as well as myoepithelial cells. Now, the other entity among um, proliferative epithelial lesions without atypia is sclerosing adenosis. Sclerosing adenosis is uh, essentially when we see too many SNI. So just now, hyperplasia is we see too many cells. Sclerosing adenosis is within the region of a single terminal duct, we see too many SNI structures. Now, with proliferative lesions with atypia, we have atypical ductal hyperplasia and atypical lobular hyperplasia. These are when there is proliferation with both usually architectural as well as cytologic atypia, but not enough to be uh, in situ carcinoma. So let's look at the risk. For the proliferative lesions without atypia, there's a slight increased risk of malignancy, 1.5 to 2 times, whereas for those with atypia, it's a uh, four to five times increased risk of malignancy. So usually these patients will have to be followed up. Okay, the next major category, which we'll talk about in a separate mind map, is that of neoplasms. So for neoplasms, it's very important and helpful to refer back to your knowledge of histology of the normal breast. And we will look at neoplasms in terms of epithelial neoplasms, which usually arise from a terminal duct lobular unit, fibroepithelial neoplasms, which often arise from the intralobular specialized stroma, and then actual stromal tumors, which arise from the interlobular stroma, and others.